So what would be the relationship between Q and K if the forward reaction is spontaneous? Inverse relationship. You have to be a little more specific than that. Um, Maybe you should use some numbers. So let's say, let's say that Q, I'm just going to make up some numbers. So let's say that Q is uh, 5 and K is 7. I'm just making up easy to use numbers, okay. not realistic numbers. Uh, say Q is 3 and K is 7. If Q is 3 and K is 7, is the net reaction going to want to move forward, going to want to move reverse, or is the net reaction going to want to stay put? Forward. Yeah, because we haven't gotten to equilibrium yet. We haven't gotten far enough forward. So the net reaction is going to want to go forward. All right? So which row of the table would that put us in? The first. Yeah. How about if Q is equal to 4? Same. Four. Yeah. So when we're in this first row, what's the relationship between Q and K? Q is smaller than K. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Because this means we haven't gone forward enough to get to the destination yet. We have to continue going forward so we can get to our destination. Okay. So this is the case where we haven't gone far forward enough. That's why we're continuing to spontaneously go forward to try to get to that destination. So what would be the relationship between Q and K in this row? Q equals K. Right. Why would the net reaction stop only if you reached your destination? So in this case, when would we reach equilibrium? What would Q have to be for us to reach equilibrium? Seven. Seven. By the way, we can already notice here, as the reaction goes forward, who is changing, Q or K? Q. 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 K is not changing. That's a common mistake. That's why it's called the equilibrium constant. It's not changing for any particular reaction. Uh, that's another common mistake that students make. There's oftentimes test questions that ask you, um, what's the effect of each of the following on Q or on K? Well, very often there's no effect on K because K is a constant under many situations, but people tend to get confused about that. The reason why they get confused is they think that K changes every time the concentrations change because they don't realize that K is based on the equilibrium concentrations. That's why it's so misleading to leave off these equilibriums here. So uh, there's commonly questions on the test like, suppose you increase the amount of ammonia. Will K increase, decrease, or stay the same? Well, if you wrote down the equation like this, it looks like increasing the amount of ammonia would increase K. But if we write it like this, we see that changing the actual amount of ammonia has no effect on K. It only changes the Q. K was just based on what it would be at equilibrium. OK. And finally, what's the relationship between Q and K here? Q is and that's why, what does that mean? It means we've gone too far forward. We've overshot the mark, so to speak. We've gone past the destination, and we've got to shift into reverse to get back to what our actual destination is supposed to be. That's why, in this case, it's the reverse reaction that's spontaneously happening on net. How could you ever get to this point? Well, for example, you could get to this point Suppose that when you started, you had a lot of the product and only a little of the starting materials, so to speak. Well, then the reaction would immediately start moving into reverse. Um, so if there's nothing weird about having a Q that's bigger than K. That just happens when you start with too much of the right-hand materials and too little of the left-hand materials. Then we move into reverse to get back to what the ultimate destination is supposed to be. All right, so earlier, um, I think you were asking whether there was something we were supposed to compare Q to. Well, maybe you were thinking of this, comparing Q to K. K is the benchmark that we're going to compare Q to. So uh, this is another row of our synonyms table. If you're told that the forward reaction is spontaneous, that's a synonym for saying that Q is less than K. And uh, if you're told that Q is greater than K, that's a synonym for saying that the forward rate is less than the reverse rate. Uh, let me briefly remind you about delta G with a little circle, which you might have seen. The little circle here means standard and standard conditions. What are standard conditions? Well, standard um, pressure is one atmosphere. Standard concentration is one molar. So for a gas, standard conditions would be a partial pressure of one atmosphere. And for an aqueous species, standard conditions would be a concentration of one molar. For gases, standard condition is based on the pressure, partial pressure. And for aqueous species, 
uh, standard conditions is based on the concentration. So this tells us what the delta G would be at standard conditions. So it's not based on what the actual delta G is right now. It's kind of like, again, the difference between Q and K. It's a little bit similar to the difference between delta G and G. Q is based on the actual conditions right now. K is based on what the conditions will be at equilibrium. Delta G is based on what the conditions are right now. Delta G circle is based on what the conditions would be if we were in standard conditions, which may or may not ever happen. But if we somehow manipulated things based on standard conditions, that would give us that delta G. So you can see why I didn't put the circle into this table, because whether the forward reaction is spontaneous in the actual conditions depends on the actual delta G, not what the delta G would be if we happen to be in standard conditions. I would say this concept is uh, considerably less important than this one here, but it's something you might see this in the test, and we don't want to get them confused with each other. 